Professor Brian Brown's research shows that vulnerability fosters good emotional and mental health. It is a sign of courage. We become more resilient and brave when we embrace who we truly are and what we are feeling. The Vulnerable Scientist Podcast is a space for scientists to tell their honest and authentic stories. I am your host, Saranya Kerry, who happens to be a scientist, informal science communicator, and I help scientists create personal websites. If you want to support this show, go to www.patreon.com slash the vulnerable scientist. You can also follow this podcast on all social media platforms at TV Scientist Pod. Does that answer the question? <laughs> it does answer the question. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to leadership. <laughs> yes, that's a very a very good place to go to. Mm. Uh, yeah. So now, oh, I was elected. And, and the reason I will tell you in a few, the reason why I talk about leadership mm. and uh, I'm going to tie leadership and extracurricular activities because mm. essentially mm. it is an extracurricular it's activity. activity. You mm. went to school to study. Yeah. And then you find yourself in this leadership position. Mm. So for me, the second second semester or first year, I was mm. elected as a class president. Mm. And the way I was elected is, is is a different story. I write it in in my first book. Okay. But I, I wouldn't. I would not go into details. But okay. I'll just speak about how how that leadership changed my life. Mm. So you know, you know, you are so self aware, and you know that you don't speak the way you want to speak. Mm. You are not in a certain social class and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, you're doing well in class. And, and I think you, my classmates kind of saw that and they saw some leadership skills in me. Otherwise, why, you know, and, and I feel like that's the reason why they elected me to lead them. Mm-hmm. And I was now leading a class of 80 students. It was so intimidating. Mm-hmm. But again, mm-hmm. I, I just accepted the role and I, I did what I, what, I, what, I, what I knew, what I, I was best in. Mm-hmm. And... I led my class for for five years, and the reason why I'm really proud of this, mm. um, and I, I want to say uh, leadership and also extracurricular, I was also running, mm. and I was I was in athletics, and I was also in uh, soccer, mm-hmm. and I was soccer and athletics captain uh, for J women. Wow! And so I had so many I had so many leadership roles that I was juggling. Which but, number were you playing? Uh, I was playing f- uh, forward and and wings oh, number oh, seven hey. particularly. Kimbia, Kimbia. Mm-hmm. I tell you. And the running so actually the reason, helped here in these positions, right? Uh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yes. Sorry, I played soccer too, so. <laughs> oh, nice. Which position? Nikiski, I'm trying to to which position. I know they know they know the structure. Okonyuma. <laughs> Defender. <laughs> nice. Yeah, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, extra curricular activities. Mm-hmm. Yes, extracurriculum. So the the reason why I'm really proud of this is because November sixth, two thousand and fourteen, mm. I applied in a in a very long story. Also, I applied for road scholarship. So road scholarship is one of the best scholarships in the world, mm. and you only take the scholarship at the University of Oxford. Mm. So that also makes it more prestigious. Mm. And I had I had been shortlisted, and I was sitting in front of a long panel of seven, I think seven or eight panelists. Mm. One of the panelists is the famous David Ndi. Mm-hmm. And I remember this, and I remember this panelist asking me, Gladys, you, you have very, you have excellent, excellent grades. Cause I was, I, I got a first class. So I had so many A's, mm. strong A's. Mm. So they asked me, what else are you bringing on the table? Mm-hmm. And Sarah like all the leadership, all mm. the sports that I had done, I one by one I told them. One by one I told them, I and that's how I got the that scholarship. I was so impressed. Like if you combine yes. academic excellence and extracurricular yes. excellence, that's yes. Oh my God, that's you. You just when I told you, and I think this you, thing, you, yeah, is, you you have found the word. I've not found the word. Hot cake. <laughs> yes, hot cake. <laughs> And I saw this thing actually in school when we were about to finish, um, mm. when these career talks came and people started talking about uh, it's not all, always about academics and all that. You need mm-hmm. to um, 
I, I, I studied in Setos Girls, and Setos Girls was known not okay. to be a very high performance school, just a professional school, yes, but it was not mm-hmm. a very high performance school in terms of academics, mm-hmm. but it was. Mm. Um, it was very extracurricular, like intensive. Like if you took your child there and they came mm. from a private school where they're being fed and they didn't have that independence of, I need to study at this time, I need to do this, then mm-hmm. they would necessarily not perform well in mm-hmm. their in their mm-hmm. academics. But there's a high mm-hmm. chance that they'll be good in extracurricular. But the good thing is the people who really concentrated with their school and uh they weren't be, of course just because we weren't being pushed to perform um mm-hmm. as much so you'll find that person has a self motivation to study at the same time get good mm-hmm. grades at the same time mm-hmm. they have all these clubs and they're being pushed to do the, it wasn't like a disgrace not to be in a club or a sport mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Uh, whatever like mm-hmm. you being there is a good thing everybody like mm-hmm. i remember my physics teacher late mm-hmm. uh, may god rest his soul um, he mm. he saw me standing somewhere uh, watching the choir, and he he told me I used to perform well in physics, and he mm. would say, "Hi Sarah, why are you still standing there? Join the choir." I'm like, <laughs> join. he kept saying that you should join the choir. I can see you have an interesting choir. You just, I didn't he didn't know if I knew, knew how to sing. He was just like, mm. you, "You just join the choir. Like if you want to do something, mm. just join." So it was something that was people. Um, Teachers, most teachers saw it as a good thing when a student excels in mm. both just school and academics. And when we were getting mm. to a form four, I saw that people who, especially some students who are so into clubs that were just very educational kind, like it's still mm. not, it's extra curricular, but it's not extra, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they, they started... Mm-hmm. So they started now being active because these career talks were talking mm-hmm. about how you need to go into other things. So they started being active in other things like going into mm-hmm. a sport. And it's just late from mm-hmm. three when people are actually being chased out of clubs right now. So they started being active mm-hmm. in these clubs, joining the Japanese club, joining history, the agriculture, mm-hmm. joining the uh, hockey, going to for practices for mm-hmm. football. Like they started being everywhere because they needed those things in their CV, mm, mm. <laughs> like in the, mm. the CV in quotes in, for, from high mm. school. So it's it's something mm. very important, I, the way you've said it. And if you can excel in both, you're really good. And mm. uh, the reason I'm I saying know. this um, is yes. I used to not really perform well because of my method, I didn't mm-hmm. really understand how uh, I work. And uh, all mm-hmm. through my high school, I used to be known by someone, like someone who sings. Uh, I was the solo I was actually top mm. crew in terms of mm. music. And I was known, my face was known mm. for that. I was an introvert, so my face was known mm. for that loud girl who can sing really well, who mm-hmm. can sing for these big people who come to school or who, when they go out, mm. she can be paid for to actually go out and sing. Mm. But mm-hmm. I wasn't up there in terms of academics until when mm. I finished. The first time they they noticed, oh, actually this girl can perform, is when I came, I think, third or second in the overall. Wow. From yeah. index 50-something wow. wow. to that. So yes. people are like, oh my, like people are wow. impressed because it's yeah. like, she's like, high on extracurricular and she's high mm-hmm. on academics. Like something that's mm-hmm. a hot kick. Like when you say that, when you mm-hmm. said that, these people were sitting mm-hmm. on a panel and they're like, oh, good, great, nice. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, mm-hmm. a lady, engineering, mm-hmm. and she has good mm-hmm. grades. It is. Mm-hmm. But again, mm-hmm. what else do you bring mm-hmm. to the table? Then you mention mm-hmm. all these things, soccer, and not mm-hmm. just soccer. You are the leader. You are the captain mm-hmm. of um, the running team. You are, the, you are a runner, yes. right? You're also yes. the leader of your class, a mm-hmm. uh, class president, you're doing these mm. other things that have nothing to do with academics, but you're excelling mm. in them again. It's not like you're just mm. there. You're also excelling those. That's mm. very impressive. And very, I know. very important I know. in life. Very important. But I have to say, Sarah, like mm. when I was, even when I was accepting the leadership role, mm. I, I think it's one thing to do it when you know it's good on your CV, mm-hmm. and it's another thing to do it when it's your passion and you want to mm. serve. Yeah. And for me, it was, it was, the, it was, it was, I wanted to, it was, I wanted, it, I, I did not even know where the, all these things will come and connect. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. I was mostly doing them, even soccer and, and running. It, it filled my schedule a lot in campus. Mm-hmm. And I was doing them just out of passion. And I wanted to, to explore that passion. And mm-hmm. um, I think it's good to operate from that. Like whatever the passion is, in mm-hmm. as much as you know, it will help your CV. But I think it's, but it's more sustainable when you mm-hmm. do it. From your when heart. You do it just, from yes. your heart. Mm-hmm. From your heart is important. Yeah. So on this day, Sarah, you're on the 6th of November, 2014. Hmm, now when they ask the me date. and I see it, eh? You remember the date? The I will not forget dates. because that's what changed my life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that scholarship. I mean, so that's why I'd never forget the day. I'm yeah, really surprised. November that, 2, 2 p.m. And I'm surprised that it was an economics who was also part of so, the panel. Uh, in some hotel in Westlands. Yeah, in a long panel. And, and I, I, I don't forget because obviously David Ndi was there and mm. he, he, most of the hard quest, hardest questions were from him. Oh, so okay. I will never forget that interview. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, what I want to say is for someone who is in campus, and I know most of these things, when I look back, actually, I used mm. to, you know, when you see them as not important mm. and you think your your grades and library is more important, mm. I would I would like to say, if I was telling my, my, and that's what I was telling my siblings when they were going to campus, I was like, yeah, you've been admitted to university to, mm. to, for academics, mm. but you will, you will be so much ahead in life if you do more things, um, mm. extracurricular activities that you love. If you make quality friends, people who are headed in the same direction. Most of my closest friends, actually, if I was to rank my friends, uh, top 10 of my friends, eight would be from undergrad. We mm. formed very strong connections in, 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 while helping each other to, to um, helping each other to to graduate with first classes, and also, I mean, I will tell you about my story of my campus boyfriend who also pushed my boundaries, mm. right? So, for making friends, intentional quality friends, you can do chamas with your friends, you can mm-hmm. learn businesses, you can go motivating students in your primary schools. Like you could be developing all these. T- all these things and and helping each other to to graduate with distinctions mm. uh, and 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 make like long lasting friends. Mm. But anyway, I wanted to say one thing. Mm. Uh, while you are doing all these passions and you are and you think you are wasting time, I think that's I think that's a, that's the mentality. You feel like you are wasting time if you are not reading. Mm. But I want to and and there is this speech by Steve Steve Jobs, mm. the founder of Apple. Mm. In, in a commencement speech in 2006, I think, mm. at Stanford, I suppose. I, I, I'm not very sure about the details. But he talked about something that I, I like. I like quoting and I like using as my guide every mm. time I, I'm at a junction mm. and you, you want to make a decision, but you are not sure if this decision will actually even help in your life in any way. Mm. And he talks about every time you are doing something, you do you do it 100% on and right Make the dot, like, do it well, uh, write that dot very well and move forward. Mm -hmm. And don't over-obsess about how this dot will connect because into the future, when you Mm -hmm. look back Mm -hmm. five years, ten years back, all the dots in your life will connect perfectly well. And it's better if you had drawn the dots well. Mm -hmm. And I think when I look back now, that leadership position when I was elected to be class president in first year, when I chose to lead a football team, athletics team, when I was, uh, most of the weekends, I was not in Juja. We were somewhere in Eldoret running. We mm-hmm. were somewhere in uh, Kampala doing East Africa University games, somewhere in all over the place. Mm-hmm. I did not know that these dots will perfectly connect on 6th of November to give me a scholarship. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the that's the piece of advice that I would like to give uh, students when whatever you're doing if it's your passion you can't at that point when you're doing that you can't see necessarily where it's going to help in your life but if it's your passion do it well because those dots will connect perfectly well when you look back in the future Do you want to learn about the strategies for enrolling, thriving, and excelling in a PhD program? Dr. Gladys Ngetich has written a book on the PhD journey, 
with lessons from various PhD students across the globe and from her lessons as a ex-Oxford PhD student. Dr. Gladys is now a postdoc researcher at MIT. For you to get a chance to get a free book, post your favorite podcast episode of the Vulnerable Scientist podcast on any social media account and tag the Vulnerable Scientist social media account with the hashtag the Vulnerable Scientist book giveaway. You can now pre-order the book on Amazon or as an ebook on Kindle Kobo Dalia ETC. You can get more information on this book on www.gladischepkirui.com/books.